Dr. Matt Menino is the founder of the faith-based personal achievement company, Source Trainings, and the developer of Quantum Emergence, a revolutionary system of personal transformation and life restoration. As a chiropractor and neuroscience expert and innovator, he encourages everyone to transform their lives by teaching the principles he used to build one of the largest solo practices in the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Dr. Matt Menino. Why, thank you, thank you, thank you. How are we doing? <laughs> so let's do this. We'll get in alignment in what? <laughs> and so what I'm going to, I'm going to ask you again, but this time everybody say together, amazing. It's good practice, yeah. So how you doing? Amazing. How'd that feel? Good. Right on, right on. <laughs> amazing, that's right. So, how many of you had a breakthrough this event? An experience that went beyond what you planned, what you thought, what you were expecting. Something that hit you here, not here, right? A breakthrough is something that, um, man, it's, it's when it happens, it's surreal almost. It's like it can't get any better than this because you never expected it. Have you had one of those this weekend? Yeah, a few. Okay, right on. So, so if you haven't, are you open to having one? Right on. So what we're going to be looking at, and those of you who didn't raise your hand just noticed that. Hey, I want to take a second and really just thank um, Jill's, Dr. Jill's and Dr. Fab for this invitation. I'm the new guy on the block, and uh, it's just an amazing honor. For me to be part of this this powerful lineup of, of leaders in our profession so i just wanted to thank him thank both of them for for bringing me out today and uh, i really look forward to sharing some stuff with you guys and and really help you uh, get this get this uh experience called a breakthrough today and more importantly than that actually do something with it so it's tangible it's real and that you really know that something happened here this weekend something that you couldn't have planned, something that you couldn't have imagined, but you know in, the, in, in your gut that there's been a shift, there's been a change. You know what I'm saying? Would that be cool to have one of those? Yeah. Most, of you, most of you have experienced that in some way, and again, the key is that you have to be open. Be what? Open, open just because it, it has nothing to do with your agenda. It had nothing to do with what you were expecting or planning to happen. It just comes out of nowhere. And my experience, to, just to let you know, this is almost like a homecoming for me. It's, it's, it's really, really special to be up here because about 15 years ago, I was sort of sitting in your seats and, you know, the, the practice was doing okay. It wasn't like, um, you know, it, it was like I was ready to give up or, or struggling to the point where a lot of the, the people that I'm working with are right now, but I knew that there was a lot more. I knew there was a lot more for me and that what I had to offer so I came here, because this is where you learn it. And it wasn't in the classroom. It wasn't one of the speakers. I, I saw a classmate that I had graduated with. And we're just, you know, talking and everything. And by the time, you know, I was about 150 volume a week, you know. And I'm thinking I'm all that in a bag of chips. 150, you know, I'm making some money, I'm saving. But it was, it was just practicing. It was just more sh sort of showing up. And he's sitting there and he, and, and, and he, and he tells me, um, yeah, um, I was like, well, you know. What are you seeing? What's your volume? Because that's how we measure, you know? That's how we get our identity in this profession. And uh, he's like, oh, about 800. I'm like, what? And at that moment, it was, uh, I, I couldn't even conceive that. I couldn't even understand how that happened. My, my logical brain just checked out. 800, are you serious? What is that about? And we spent about three hours out in the hallway, and he just, he just shared with me and enlightened me and just, you know, you know, how he ran his practice and, you know, how he came from his heart and it was service and just concepts that were totally and completely foreign to me. But the cool thing, in that moment, I had a breakthrough. I had one of these heart shifts that said, you know what, that's what I need to do. And not only that's what I need to do, I can do it. I, I, I was really filled with a sense of hope and confidence. It was one of those things that, that uh, I had no clue 
with my natural, intellectual, logical brain what that was going to look like, how that was going to happen, but I knew here. Do you follow what I'm saying? That's a breakthrough. That's, that's the shift that we're after. And I'm going to do my best to have you experience one of those things today. Uh, to get this, this sense that you know that you know, even though you don't know. And it's at a completely different level. It's a completely different level of sh sh not only showing up in practice, but showing up in life. And the, 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 this, this process has been uh, really a, a journey based on the principles that you already know. You already know. And I spend the majority of my time, my, my, uh, my company's called Source Trainings, and, uh, and we started about six years ago. And what I did was I took the chiropractic principles out to the lay people. If you heard Dr. Sigluk's answer, he goes, I don't know why they call them lay people, they're standing up. But the lay people, people who are not in our profession, people don't have the insight and the, the privilege and honor to know what we know. But I took the principles and I brought it to them. And I help multimillionaires, I help businesses. My company is all about transforming your business in this place, transforming your practice by transforming you. Because don't you know that your practice, your income, your relationship, everything is in a, a reflection, it's an expression of you. And I learned that because I saw it. I was like, I was using my mind, I was using my natural brain to do this stuff, and I was average at best, okay? Average practice, average incomes, I was okay, I was making money, but when this got involved, holy cow, you know? Went to a thousand a week, multi-millions of dollars, because I connected with a power and, and a force that you guys deal with every day, that we deal with every day. And so how I start, when I'm talking to the lay people, when I'm talking to the, and my passion is, is for the small business person, the person in the trenches, that it's up to you to make this thing happen. Entrepreneurs, whoever is showing up, I speak across North America, to help people in their businesses. And I, you know how I start off? I start off saying, you know, I went to chiropractic school, and, and they, they just drilled into my head that first year that it's not about you. It has nothing to do about you and your skill and your talent and your knowledge and your experience, but it has everything to do with this thing called innate. It has everything to do with this supernatural power, this unseen force that we can't put under a microscope. We, you know, you got all kinds of different definitions for it, and there's all kinds of, you know, arguments as to what it is. What it, but I came out of there having this really sense of awe and reverence to this power, to this, to this force called an eight. And I saw it do miracles, just as you see it every day. And this is what I'm telling, I'm telling, I'm telling the people, this is, this, is, this is what I learned, you know? And, and, and this, is, this is where my confidence and strength came from to do what I needed to do in business because I trusted the unseen. I learned to trust a power, a force greater than me, greater than my knowledge, my intellect, my experience, my skill. Even though I had all that stuff, you know, a piece of paper, diploma, you got this stuff, another piece of paper says you have a license to make you legal, uh, but does that guarantee your success? Not so much. And they knew this too, right? They did all the training experience. They said, get rid of it and trust in this power, trust in this law that goes beyond all that stuff, right? And I, and I would tell them, I said, and you already do. How many people this morning you woke up and you said, you know, I better bring my weight jacket just in case gravity stops. Did you do that today? How many people thought about bringing a weight jacket to the conference? Just in case, be on the safe side. Why not? Is gravity not a very powerful force that influences every aspect of our life? Oh, but you didn't think about it. Who do you think you are? Why didn't you think about it? If it's that forceful, that powerful, you just went on your merry way without bringing your weight jacket, right? How many people get really stressed out, afraid, and angry when you flip on the light switch and it doesn't work? Do you question the law of electromagnetic forces? Does that even enter your mind? No, you think about, I didn't pay the bill, the, the, you know, the, the circuit breaker, the bulb, right? Never the law, never the supernatural force that's governing everything. Why? Because at a deep level, you know that it's not to be questioned. It's always there, never fails, never ever 
doesn't work for you. It's a constant. Yeah, just like the power in your body to heal, repair, restore, right? Oh, why doesn't it work? Oh, there's this thing called uh, interference that sort of gets in the way of this. It begins to block this force, this natural power, and they told us, and again, I'm, I'm, this is what I'm telling the people, you know, I said, they, they told us, they trained us in understanding how this law works, to heal, to repair, restore, and it's already in you. <laughs> the really cool thing is you don't have to go look for it, right? I said, but, but, if for some reason it gets interfered with, for some reason it gets blocked or suppressed, oh, then you're in you're big trouble. It's called dis-ease that leads to dysfunction, that leads to pain symptoms. And they're like, oh, okay, I, I'm getting it. it, sort of makes sense, because they trust, you know, how, how many times, are you thinking right now, concentrating on running your heartbeat and breathing? Is that, a, is that a process of your thought process? Or is it just happening? Right, you already trust the law. Again, this is what I'm telling them. I said, then they told, so, so what I did, what they told us to do is quit looking at the symptoms. Don't look at the person's pain. You got to look inside. You got to look behind the scenes. Right? And then I tell them, okay, so how do I do that? I take an x-ray. See the x-ray? The, the vertebrae is twisted out of place. And there's your problem. Yeah, I got it, Mary, that you have a headache. That's the surface problem. But underneath, behind the scenes, you got a vertebrae that swims out of place. You put pressure on there. That's your cause. <gasps> Oh my goodness, no one's ever showed that to me, right? It's called the breakthrough. Look behind the scenes, see what's causing the problem. Patient just the other day in the office, come in, radiating our pain. Just, oh my goodness, tears. And she couldn't even barely tell me going through the history. I just like kept calming her down, got it. It's the arm, it's the arm, radiating pain, it's horrible. It keeps me up, I can't function, right? Once I let her dump, then I just said, okay, how would you feel if, just if, just sort of entertain the thought that maybe, just maybe, it's not your arm. I know that it's overwhelming, there's overwhelming evidence to your senses that it's your arm that's the problem. But just sort of step back, let's take a look at this, and maybe there's another cause, okay? And I said, look over here, and I show the chart. So you see this part of the spine? You see these little yellow things going down? And that's a nerve, right? So where does that nerve come from? Well, it's, this is the back spine, yeah. And do you see where it goes? It goes into the right arm. Okay. So maybe, just maybe, the problem's not your arm, it's that causing. <gasps> you should, her physiology shifted, just changed. It's like somebody took a weight off her shoulders. I didn't even touch her. <laughs> but by the end of our communication, Guess how she was feeling? She was feeling better because there was hope, right? There was hope of the chance of feeling better and getting out of this pain. And guess what? Uh, she already had it, right? So the next thing I tell these people is that you already have the power to heal, repair, restore every cell, every tissue and organ in your body, right? Yeah. Do you question that? No. Well, the same power, call it innate, call it God, call it spirit, right? Also heals your finances, heals your relationships, heals your life. Well, what do you mean, Dr. Matt? This power, right, doesn't have a limitation on just healing and restoring and repairing your physical body. It also has the power to heal, repair, restore your money, your finances, your relationships, every aspect of your life, right? So what I tell them is in the same way we release this to release this power, this energy, this force in them is the exact same way we improve your practice. We improve your life. We improve whatever symptom you feel that you're struggling with right now heals the exact same way. So what I tell them, I said, quit looking for your answers out there. Quit trying to seek 
money. Seek success. Look for it. Build it. Work hard for it. Struggle for it. Learn. Train. Uh, and start releasing it. Just like you release every day in your office. You find this and you remove it. And then the patient works really hard to heal and repair themselves. Right? They, they, okay, after the adjustment, they lay on the bench. Okay, heal. Release the power. I'm going to do five sit-ups and... Right? Or is it a natural process? Does it not just take place? Does it, does it not just sort of uh, uh, naturally come about the way it's supposed to? Yeah, same thing with your practice, same thing with your money, same thing with your relationships. You don't work for this stuff. It's a natural expression once you do what? Remove this. How's that work, Dr. Matt? I forgot the idea of a bone sitting on a plate, suppressing nervous system. But you mean to tell me you remove interference and all of a sudden I'm going to make more money? My practice is going to grow or my relationship is going to be healed and restored instantly. Yeah, pretty much. Really? Well, the only reason you would potentially question that is if you would question the power of your mind, the power of your nervous system. Here's the cool thing, that your nervous system has no idea whether you're struggling with health problems or wealth problems. It has no idea if you are dealing with family issues or financial issues. It just knows that if you let it, if you let this innate power show up in your life, it can restore, balance, heal, repair, everything. Right? Power your mind. Do this for me. Look at your uh, hand right here. See the little lines? Okay? Match them up with your hands. Take your wrists, wrap them up. We're going to show you the power of your mind to create change in your life. Match them up. Okay. And when you look at your fingers, do you see a group of fingers that maybe looks a little shorter than the others? You see that? If you don't, if you don't have a, group, a set of fingers that are shorter, then just pick one, okay? I'm going to show you the power of the mind here. So take that hand, take the short finger hand, and we're going to focus our mind energy. We're going to focus some intent, some thought on this, and we're going to say eight times, grow longer. Okay, we're going to do this together. Ready? Focus your energy, focus your thought on those little short fingers. They need some help, they need to grow. Ready? And begin. Grow longer, 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 grow longer. Okay, here's your test. Bring them back. <laughs> what is that about? When you question the power of your mind. Create an instant change, right? <laughs> right, so just so you're not freaked out the rest of the time, what the heck? Let's put it back, okay? <laughs> so, same hand, <laughs> five times back to normal, okay? Five times and begin. Back to normal, back to normal, back to normal. Back to normal, back to normal. Go ahead, retest. How you doing? Deep breath in. <sighs> I don't know how it works. It's just fun, fun to play with your mind. And by the way, it just works with the hand, not other body parts. So, <laughs> hey, honey, come here. <laughs> Thought you went to a choir practice seminar. So we're playing with it. So let's, let's kick in this in a little bit and talk about the power of your mind. One of my favorite quotes, men and women are not prisoners of fate, but only prisoners of their own mind. What does that mean? We break through. What's the idea of a breakthrough? Define it. How do you define a breakthrough? Anyone? Yell it out. What? A shift. A what? What else? Good. Something you didn't expect. Excellent. What else? An upgrade, beautiful, love it. What else? Communication. Is a breakthrough a good thing? Is it a good thing to see the cause of the issues of your life? Is it a good thing to see behind the scenes and take a look and say, okay, well, maybe it's not all what it appears to be. 
And that's exactly what happens with your patients because where's their focus? The senses are overloading them, bombarding with them the information about their pain. So the focus is on the pain. Your toughest job, our toughest job in this profession is taking them off that focus of pain and symptoms and showing them the cause, right? But as soon as you go there, you're going into this intangible realm. You're going into this place that really is, is it's, it's a tough place to be. So you, you, you've got you've to work with analogies, you've got to work with, with some information that these people really can connect with, okay? So when we take a look at this, this process of our mind, we realize that there's, there's essentially three, three things that we're dealing with. We've got three brains, three minds. And if the power is in the mind, the power is already within you. So that's, and I came out of school, again, this was drilled in, you know, philosophy, right? This was drilled into my head for, for three years. So I, I, I came out, and I'm thinking, man, everybody knows this stuff. They're going to be looking for me, right? How cool. Now, I was, I was sad that all these people that I was working with were totally clueless. They were totally disconnected from the fact that the power, their very answer to their problems and issues was already in them. I'm like, really? You don't know this? I was frustrated that so many people were disconnected from this source of energy, and it was right under their noses. And I, I, I was angry because they were all looking for something outside to help them. They were looking for something outside of them, the drugs, the surgery, all this stuff, right? And it's exactly what's going on with the business people that I work with, right? They're looking for the thing. They're looking for... <laughs> Dr. Sigurd, who's the stretch o -matic. They're looking for the technique, the tool, the thing outside without looking at the inside. They forgot that you already have everything you would ever need to create the success, the abundance, the prosperity, the happiness, the joy, the love, whatever. It's, it's already there. And so my emotions were, 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 okay, well, I've got to help train them. That was my motivation. They got to at least get connected, and that's what I did with that lady, right? I gave her hope that to see the fact that the pain was coming already inside her, right? Well, just that knowledge was like, okay, well, maybe the answer's in there too. Cool. It was a little shift, right? So what do we know about our minds? And we're going to take a look at the, the, the couple of processes. The first thing is that when we look at this, how many thoughts a day do you think you have, average person? 64,000, there you go, right on. And, and how, many of those same, uh, how many of those thoughts were the exact same thoughts you had the day before? <laughs> right, about 95%, exactly. And to the untrained, undisciplined, uncontrolled mind, how many are negative and non-supportive? About 80% of those, yeah. So just to show up, just by waking up and letting this thing do its thing, right, the majority of what you're going to be thinking about today was the exact same thing you thought about yesterday. And how effective is that for creating change? Right? And left to its own devices, it's thinking negative stuff. So one of the first things I tell these people when I'm working them to get them used to their nervous system, their brains is like, you're, you're not your thoughts. So that's the first thing. It's just like thinking you're your, your heart, your stomach, and your digestive system. That's not you. These are their functions, your brain is an organ, it thinks things. And it really could care less what it's thinking. And the reason why it thinks negative stuff is because it's looking to protect you. Think of this thing as sort of like the, the guard of the Buckingham Palace, right? Is he looking for the little girl playing in the street or is he looking for the sniper in the tree? Sniper in the tree, right? And that's why you think what would go wrong, what can go wrong, what will go wrong all the time unless you do what? control and manage your mind, right? So that's sort of the natural process. We got these three things. And then we got the subconscious and superconscious. So what I've done here is create a little model so that people can get a little better understanding of what you're up against in creating transformation and how we begin to manipulate and control this situation. So just take a look at some of these things. What's the function of the, the frontal lobe, the neocortex? It thinks stuff, it's creative, it's, you know, remembers logic, rational. Everything has to be orderly. Everything has to be sensible. Everything has to fall in line for this thing to be okay. And if not, 
if something doesn't make sense to you, if something's illogical, irrational, or doesn't sound right, this thing freaks out because those are alarms, right? But as soon as you know, as soon as you have all the answers, as soon as you have figured it out, how do you feel? And it's done its job. But see, until you, you got that, it's going to keep thinking those negative things, okay? So it's a seat of awareness and decision making. What's the next part? Subconscious, you've heard of this one, right? Fight, flight, feelings, emotions, deductive reasoning only. We'll talk about that in a second. It's key. So here, Dr. Uh, Chestnut earlier, how many saw that presentation? Powerful, awesome. We're going to go a little deeper and talk about this thing. Beliefs, they drive everything. You will never, ever, ever do anything for any extended period of time that goes against your belief system. And we'll talk about why that happens too. 95% of everything that goes on comes from that, that place. And then we're gonna say that your highest expression is this thing called pure consciousness. Pure consciousness is this theme that you can observe your thoughts. Have you ever done that? Just sort of step back and, and watch your frontal lobe <laughs> do what it does? Oh, wow, why did I just think that? Interesting. Oh, and, you know, and then you talk to your subconscious. Hmm, where did that emotion come from? What's that about? See, because they're not you. You're, you're not your beliefs, you're not your emotions, feelings. That's responses of neuropeptides and this, these, this part of your brain functioning. But where do most people live? They get sucked into that, <laughs> that paradigm that, oh, I get to feel bad now because I have a negative thought or I'm feeling bad or whatever else, right? So this, this process becomes one of uh, 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 learning to observe your thoughts and feelings and emotions versus participate in them, okay? As soon as you've done that, as soon as you stepped outside, just like that lady sitting in my office, right? As soon as we, we, we okay, we got that you're hurting. We understand, let her dump, let her express, let her feel it, just like allow, your thoughts and emotions to do stuff. But don't buy into them. <laughs> don't think they're real for a minute. We're gonna talk about why they exist, right? Become that observer, so then you can be sort of back in the control. And being in control, at least thinking that you have influence on this outside dimension is key, right? So Anwar, what did you talking you cannot change the very fabric of his thoughts, will never be able to change reality and not make any progress. So where does it start? It starts with changing. Have you heard this before, right? All the gurus talk about, change your thoughts, right? What do you think about, you bring about. Positive mental attitude, good start. How has that been working for you to create the practice of your dreams and the life of your dreams, right? Why is this so hard? Why would you say, what, what comes to your mind? What, what's, what's the challenge of this thing? Okay, I'll give you the answer. <laughs> the reason it's so hard to pull yourself out, to change the thought, change your mind, because your nervous system has one job, one job only, does it very effectively, very efficiently, and it's to keep you safe. Right? Keep you safe. So here's the thing, the reason you don't have the practice of your dreams, the reason why you don't have the wealth and the abundance, the reason that you don't have the relationships and whatever else that you think you want, you desire and you go for is because your nervous system doesn't think it's safe for you. Well, what does that mean, Dr. Matt? Well, what's its job? What's the role of the nervous system? Keeps you safe. How does it do that? Two ways. The reason you don't have what you want, what you hope for, what you dream for, what you think about with this part of your brain, it's because this part of the brain says, I perceive that as potentially harmful for you. And it does an excellent job to make sure you never get more time, more money, more freedom, more love, more joy, more happiness, more peace, or whatever else. Dr. Matt, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, because the, the part of the brain, part of the nervous system that's operating and running the ship doesn't work 
by sense and logic and reason, we just said that's part of your frontal lobe, right? And if you look at a quantum physics point of view, the reason you don't have what you want, desire, goal, wish, hope, pray for, is because you are not a vibrational match for it. The law of resonance is a really simple law, everyone. Law of attraction, law of faith, law of manifestation, whatever you want to call it, bottom line, works on resonant energy. If I had a guitar and hit the, hit the G string, I mean the A string, we're in Vegas, so I guess it's okay. So hit the A string on this guitar, what string is going to vibrate on the guitar across the room? The A string, right, because they are in harmonic resonance. And that's exactly how this law works. If you want more patients and you don't have them, it's because you're not in harmonic resonance with them. If you want more money, right, then raise your vibrational state. This, this behind the scenes look looks at these process of energy and vibration and wavelength that is the source of the principle that you're talking about. Innate force, innate intelligence, the body made, the power that makes the body heals the body. What do you think that is? It's this unseen power, it's this unseen force. And it's allowed to flow easily, naturally, and effortlessly when you're in alignment. When you're congruent. A lot of different words for that, congruency, coherence. It's alignment of this thought process. The only reason you don't have what you want and say you have, because we've got a conscious brain that's thinking this, but we've got a subconscious brain that's thinking something entirely different. So let's take a look at this real quick on this, this our little flip chart model here. And I call it, you've, you've seen this before, you've un, you understand it, you've all been working with it. It's called, it's our little iceberg, okay? And up top, we're gonna call this the scene realm, and we're gonna call this the unseen realm, okay? This is your surface conscious, this is the subconscious, right? Out here is your pure conscious. So what, do you, what stands out right off the bat? Which one has the power? Which one's a little bit more dominant? Which one has more energy, right? Not, not, not too hard to see the difference between these two. So what is this about? So the surface conscious, what did I say? Nervous system keeps you safe, right? That's its job. The, the frontal lobe and the subconscious. Conscious mind keeps you safe. How does the conscious mind keep you safe? What, how, does it, how does it show up to protect you when you're in your stuck? Right? When crisis hits, when tragedy hits, when something backdoors you, 180, you never could have, uh, you know, planned on that. You know, bankruptcy, foreclosure, divorce, whatever, some, some horrible disease. Right? How does, how does the natural mind come to your rescue? What's the first thing it tries to do? It's an outward projection, right? It, it, it does it it, it, it likes to blame, it likes to point the finger. It likes to say it's, it's that attorney who keeps stealing my insurance checks, right? It's that patient who doesn't follow my recommendations or refer. It's the insurance industry who keeps jerking me around. See, the natural mind loves to blame everything and everyone outside. Because now, <laughs> it feels better because it's not your fault. So your natural mind is an amazing, it's just, oh my goodness, we come up with all kinds of ways to cope and deal with and skills and, and you know, uh, 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 blame and justify, right? Worry, fear, all that stuff is here because its job is to make you feel better. And however it can do that so it's not your fault, it's something outside of you because the, the entire focus to this part of us is the seen realm, right? I love Einstein's quote. He said, reality is merely an illusion, albeit a very persistent one. So what you're looking at, your situation, your circumstance, events, all the stuff in your life in the seen realm that your senses can pick up is an illusion. Doesn't really exist. Quantum physics says the smaller the thing gets, the more powerful it becomes, okay? This stuff is very slow and uh, uh, 
unstable, so it appears that it's real. It appears and has the sense that it's solid, right? But we know through quantum physics, everything is energy. It's shifting around. But see, the natural mind is really connected to think that this actually exists. My checkbook and the amount of money really exists. My volume, my appointments really exist. You know, one of the techniques that we did, you know, in the earlier days in the practice was, you know, we were, to we were my coaches, my trainers said, do your, you know, your weekly workshops, you know. So I did it. But nobody would show up. <laughs> So I'd have these chairs, you know, but I did it anyways because my subconscious mind didn't know there wasn't anybody there. See, the key is, you know, when we, go, when we go behind the scenes, your subconscious is clueless to the scene. It has no idea you're talking about money. It has no idea you're talking about insurance companies. It has no idea this concept uh, that you're putting so much energy and stress, or it doesn't know relationships. It doesn't even know the difference between man and woman. It has no clue, right? This is all part of your, your, your conscious. Looking at the stuff as if it's actually something. So I would show up and teach, and I'd be excited, and, and I had the most educated reception room chairs around because they heard it all the time. They could tell you subluxation really easy. But see, the key thing was my subconscious didn't know there weren't any patients there. It just knew that I was excited about doing workshops. We did the same thing with the appointment book. I saw Fred Flintstone and George Justin like every day in my office. We would just put names on the sign-in sheet in the appointment book because why? We wanted to see names in the appointment book. Don't expect ever to experience something in the scene that you first don't experience it in the unseen because the law that I know says tangible, intangible to tangible, unseen to seen, supernatural to natural, right? The force of this energy, the force of what we're dealing with is coming from this, this realm of energy. Let's go back to innate intelligence. That's not natural. That is not anything of the physical seen realm. That is completely supernatural and you guys are totally in it. This is what we're taught. Trust that force. Trust that system of laws. Trust that power. Not this. One of, my, one of my good friends, Les Brown, says, when he references the Bible, he says, my favorite book. If you heard Les Brown, my favorite book says, trust, don't look at what is seen, 2 Corinthians 20, 14. Don't look at the seen, because what is seen is temporary, subject to change. It's not real. Don't stress out about it. Don't freak out about it, because it's nothing. Right? But focus on the unseen realm. Focus on the supernatural realm, where all possibilities exist where your future, your perfect future has already been made manifest. Our Father, who art in heaven, help me, the kingdom come that will be done on earth as it's already done in the unseen quantum field, i.e. heaven. So, seeing is an illusion. So the, the, but if you don't know that, and how many people don't know that based on the neuroscience research? Guess how many? Guess how many people live their entire life never having this discussion that we're having? Research says about 75% live in this realm, this illusion that says my life is real. My finances actually have, have bearing. Uh, the, 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 I, I'll never have a good relationship. Whatever struggle, whatever pain, whatever symptom they're experiencing, they think that's the cause. So in this realm, you have no choice if you don't know there's potentially another source. Remember the lady? Let's just for an instant, let's just for a moment, just think and possibly just imagine that maybe it's not your arm. Maybe it's not your spouse. Maybe it's not your patients. Maybe it's not the insurance company. Maybe it's not that diagnosis. Just maybe the cause and effect, right? You're looking at this thing and saying, oh my gosh. This is horrible. I must feel bad. I must think negative thoughts, right? But maybe, just maybe, there's another cause to your symptom. How do you know it's a problem? This is beautiful. Nervous system is beautiful, right? Keeps you safe. How does it keep you safe when it's trying to get your attention? that you're out of alignment, that you're not congruent, that there's the distortion between your 
perfect higher self and your reality? How do you know that? How do you feel? <laughs> we call it a low energetic state. Fear, worry, pain, depression, anger. Low, hurtful, negative emotions are nothing more than your greatest gift to let you know you're not in alignment with your higher self. Again, nervous system makes no distinction whether you're dealing with emotional pain or physical pain. It can't tell the difference. It's real easy because we're so physically minded when we have physical pain to say, oh, there's got to be something wrong. What's your motivation? Make the what? Yeah, I've been doing this 21 years. I've never had a patient walk into my office and say, Dr. Matt, uh, I would love to have you help me maximize my human health potential, live a, a, a more vital uh, life to my, my fullest uh, extreme. Anybody ever ask you to do that? No, they won't. Dr. Matt, make my pain go away. Treat my symptom. Once they, sh once they show up, because pain's a powerful motivator, once they show up, then you have an opportunity to educate. Yeah, well, your emotional pain is the exact same thing. But see, the natural, the natural mind says, make the pain go away, right? So emotional pain, a little harder to deal with. So let's drug it up. Let's cope with it. Let's get some counseling. Let's avoid it. <laughs> Have a few drinks, right? Let's, let's make the emotional pain stop because we know it doesn't feel good. All the while, just like physical pain, your true self, it's just like a little kid. A little kid cuts his finger. He's like, I need some help. I need some assistance. That's all your body's trying to tell you if you're hurting, saying, I need your help. We need some attention over here <laughs> in the right arm, right? If you look at your finances and there's some knot in the stomach, lump in the throat, sweaty palms, <laughs> same thing. True self crying for help, you're out of alignment when it comes to abundance, prosperity, wealth, and success. You look at your practice, I'm not seeing enough new patients. My patients are quitting, right? They keep the checks. It's that Ashen network that's taking me out. <laughs> really. If you feel bad, that's your greatest gift to say, what do you do? You step back, observe, know that the, in that area, with respect to this area of my life, my relationships, my money, my health, I'm not in alignment. Thank you, God, for bringing this to my attention because I got some low energetic state around that. It's not your fullest expression. It's not your highest expression, okay? But see, we stay here and deal with symptoms, 75% of the population. So then what's left? 25%. Actually, well, maybe, just maybe, there's another cause. Maybe, just maybe, there's something different running the ship behind the scenes. Okay? If you went to a movie, <laughs> and on the scene, on the screen, there was a, a, a scene that caused some hurtful, painful emotion. You didn't feel good. You didn't like what you're seeing. Would you get up and go pound the screen? Why, why wouldn't you go take your frustration and anger out on what you're seeing? This doesn't make any sense, huh? Everybody knows it's not real. Yeah, neither is your life. Every time you get upset about your reality, about what's going on in the physical, you might as well be punching the movie screen because that ain't its fault. If you're open, right, maybe, just maybe, there's something behind the scenes that has a different cause and effect situation. Maybe there's an unseen force or energy that is the real cause behind my situation, my pain, my symptom, my problem. Based on quantum physics, I don't know, it doesn't matter which way you look at it, whether it's science or spirit, we've got evidence to show that this is a more plausible Scenario. Why? Only 4% of what you see is real. Only 4% of the creation, everything in the universe, is visible matter. 4%, right? Then we got another 23% that's invisible matter, and the majority of it, what is that? Whatever, 70 something, is invisible energy, right? So, what game do you want to play? 
and this would be really easy for you because you already plan it. Every time you expect to have an effect on your patients by releasing innate power, power made by heals by, every time you show up to do an adjustment, every time that you move in that capacity, you're doing it because you believe this process. I'm just challenging you to put, look at your entire life like that, right? Because the nervous system can't distinguish between physical pain and emotional pain. If you don't feel good about something, I stopped asking this, travel all over the country, ask people, how many people right now, when you think about your money and finances, you have this overwhelming sense of peace, joy, happiness, and fulfillment? Guess what the percentage of people would raise their hand? Like less than 1%. I mean, there's a lot of hurt, a lot of stress, a lot of low energy around that conversation. Why? Incongruency, misalignment, interference. But it's not in a bone, out of place. It's these things called beliefs Dr. Chestnut was talking about. Step down, energy, and the most important aspect of what we're dealing with is you, identity. So here's a question. Here's a question what my system answered. This is, this is what... This is what the journey that I went on was, where did this come from? Where did this limiting belief come from? Where did this self-sabotaging, uh, 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 potential resisting, energy limiting thing come from? Because in the personal development industry, which, which I'm in, that's all we talk about. That's all they talk about. Get rid of that belief, right? It's that belief. It's a belief in yourself. Low self-esteem, you're not worthy of money. You heard it all, right? And you're like, geez, okay, well, got it. So how do I change my belief then? It, doesn't that make sense? See, the, the natural mind goes right back up to your rescue. You've just heard a conversation about the unseen, the intangible energy force, and you go right back up to the natural mind. And say, okay, so how do I change my belief and how do I get rid of it? How do I fix this thing? That's what it does. It's always, it's always trying to figure it out. It needs control, it needs answers, it needs logic, it needs reasons. The challenge is this has absolutely nothing to do with reason or logic. It doesn't work like that. This process of you that runs your ship on an energetic level is nothing more than an expression of energy. One of my <laughs> quotes. It's very simple. Your reality is nothing more than an the best attempt for your subconscious mind to express itself. And stored energy has to be released, and it does that in the way of your reality. Again, your, the physical stuff is a resonance cause and effect. And again, what do we say? Subconscious doesn't know that you just lost your money. It doesn't know <laughs> that the, the uh, attorney kept your check. It doesn't know that you're going through bank, whatever else. It just has this agenda to fulfill, to make sure like attracts like. And if you're carrying around some low energy, then guess what you're going to express? Guess what's going to be manifest in your life? Situations, circumstance, and events, people, places, and things that resonate with that energetic pattern. Do you follow? So now the key becomes, okay, all right, this is looking at the x-ray and seeing a cause versus an effect association. Cause versus an effect association. And how do we, how do we deal with that? How do we work with that? Well, research tells us that these beliefs are there to do one thing, to protect, to protect. And if it's not protecting your physical body, again, when you think about sleeping, you know, is, are you consciously controlling your heart rate and your digestion and your breathing patterns? Is that a conscious function? Absolutely not, subconscious, right? And it's doing that because it wants to keep you alive and keep you safe. Well, in the same way, it keeps you, anything that enters this part of your nervous system, it's like, okay, it's like the Terminator. <laughs> I'm programmed to kill a set right? It's programmed to keep you safe. And that might mean the, the, 
this belief system, if your belief system shows up there, it's doing the same thing, keep you safe. I had a, we did an exercise with a training that I did, a couple other people, business people in the room, and I had everybody do, just do this real quick. I, I write down, first thing that comes to your mind when I say money is. Money is, real simple, boom, right now. They shared it, and then we talked, and uh, I was processing and working with one of the students, and uh, she had a breakthrough. She had an awareness of something that she wasn't aware of a minute ago. She saw the C2 twisted that was causing the headache and the pain, right? Very cool experience. After the show, a uh, guy came up to me and said, uh, you know, I was writing it down, and uh, I did your exercise. I wrote, uh, money is pain. I said, where did that come from? What does that mean? You know, but then he said, as I see you work with that girl, that lady, and, and she was expressing some things that were going on, she, I realized that uh, when I was eight years old, uh, I was watching my mom ask my dad for some grocery money. And in that moment, the dad began to beat his mother until she was unconscious, lying on the floor in a pool of blood. Now, would you say that was a high energetic experience or a low energetic experience? Yeah, a little fear, a little worry, a little fear. That's a very low energetic experience that created trauma or wounding at that point to his identity. A belief system was formed in that moment to make sure that that didn't ever happen again. Right? But in that moment, he realized what his subconscious did. See, the subconscious, is, it works on a literal component, literal Right? If I said guerrilla warfare, what does the natural mind come up with? You know, different strategies and tactics of, of, of military, right? But to the subconscious mind, the subconscious mind sees a gorilla with a AKA, and, or not a, whatever, K-40, one of those <laughs> weapons, right? Because it takes it literal, and that's exactly what a subconscious mind did in that moment. It said, money equals pain. Well, I don't like pain, so I guess I don't like what? Yeah, and this guy was a genius. He literally made millions and millions of dollars for other companies. But when it came to him, completely self-sabotaging, because he had a belief system that says, we need to keep you safe from all that horrible, painful money. Okay? Now, does that make any sense? It makes sense when you see the model, but it makes absolute... Well, uh, since when does pain mean money? Well, to a subconscious, it made perfect sense because it took it literal and it essentially uh, was what made this association to say when you're exposed to money, millions of dollars in, millions of dollars out. After that breakthrough, the guy not only expanded... Because what he would do is he, he would go into businesses and find out why they weren't making money. He could solve everybody else's problem. He's a genius, right, with this company that he had. But in that moment, he was able to disassociate the beliefs and meanings that he had going on based on that experience. And now it was okay in that moment for his belief system to be adopted to something that money is safe, money isn't bad. And he attracted and stayed with it, right? So this connection of cause and effect between what's going on behind the scenes and what's showing up in the natural, always, always has an association. But here's the other thing that I found, working with tons of elite leaders in this industry, in the personal development industry, one thing that you do not know, and is virtually impossible to figure out analytically, logically, with your natural brain, because these two are completely separate agendas, completely separate operating systems, is to know what your belief system is. Virtually impossible to know what your subconscious is thinking about money, relationships, and why. Would we say if you don't have something in your life right now, it's because your belief system thinks it's a threat to you. And it's doing its best to keep you safe from all that time, money, you know, joy, happiness, freedom, and love. And it's, it makes perfect sense to it. But the only way you can actually create congruency and create alignment is when you have that breakthrough experience and aware, oh, that's what you're trying to keep me safe from. See, he wasn't trying to keep from money, he was trying to keep him safe from that pain that really hurt seeing his mom get beat up. 
He didn't want to, the nervous says, I don't want you to experience that again. Just like if you stuck your hand on a hot stove, are you going to remember? Is there a reflex that's programmed back here that says, uh, next time you walk up to a hot stove, uh, don't be touching that. You don't even have to think about it, right? It's an unconscious response. Well, that's what's happening behind the scenes, everyone. When something shows up in a tangible experience in your reality that doesn't feel good. Here's the other thing about emotion. The only way you can actually experience hurtful, painful, low energetic states, things that don't feel good, they're not comfortable, you're motivated to drug it, run away from it, counsel it, get coping suit, whatever else, is because you're reliving a past experience. That's all it is. The emotional states, once again, it's a warning sign to say, hey, there's some unfinished business. You got something in your past that is not complete. It needs your attention. It needs your time. It needs your focus to finish the thing and heal the thing so we don't have to keep sending you reminders. So that's the second thing your subconscious works on. It's deductive reasoning. It takes an idea or an energetic state and really could care less. It doesn't care if this is a positive, high energetic state, love, peace, joy, happiness, or if it's a low energetic state, fear, worry, depression, anger, could care less. It doesn't really know those names and those labels. Your conscious mind put labels to it. It just knows it's a really productive, expansive state of being to be able to move and serve and contribute to help, right? When you're in that state of helping your patients, you're not thinking at all about rejection. If you move in this, you could care less if this person walked out in your office. You could care less if they didn't agree with your subluxation or dissertation. You could care less. You're just there to serve. How can I help you? You're in pain. Let's help you. Let's, it's all about you. 100% focus and attention on them. As soon as you go into your stuff, as soon as you start feeling bad and stressed and worried and in your head, subluxation of your mind of your heart. You're living a past experience because you feel bad, okay? So the only expression of negative energy is an incomplete past experience. And so once this energy is present, again, works on what we, deductive, it expresses itself in many different ways, right? Throughout your life. So whether you're a little kid hearing from your dad that you'll never amount to anything and you're a loser, well, just what else shows up in your life later on? It's it, it, probably those same words, those same feelings from a coach, right? Oh, and, and then it keeps on going. Energy's still there, right? Belief system says this person, in order to be safe, has to re-experience these emotions over and over again. Let's keep it manifesting and attracting a reality that's consistent with that energy. So the people, places, and things may change, Situations, circumstances, they look to be different on the natural, but how did we start this? We said, don't focus on that. It's going to change. Focus on the behind the scenes cause. Your subconscious could care less who or what shows up in your life as long as you have that sense. So people just keep filling your dad's shoes, right? It doesn't matter if it's a patient, an attorney, right? Coach, whatever. Because it can't see. It doesn't know what's going on, but it has an agenda. But unless you acknowledge that, first step, oh, awareness. First step, oh, feel bad. What does that mean? Well, let's go look. It means I got some unfinished business in my life. It means I got something to complete. It means there's a trapped, low energetic pattern that I'm carrying around. And I'll ask the people. My system, quantum emergent system, the system that I developed that's based entirely on the chiropractic model, entirely on the chiropractic principle that we've been talking about. I'll say, where's this showing up in your body? Where's this energy? Oh, it's right here. Right? Oh, it's in my chest. Oh, it's in my... And it's real. And they know that it's stored. They know it's been present. But we expose it. But what's this exposed? Just like looking at that x-ray. Right? Now we can do something with it. Because it's the subconscious that is playing with everything. All right? It's your subconscious that you perceive your reality. All right, stay with me. How are we doing? Deep breath in. 
let it go. Right on. Okay, so looking at this, how many see it opening from the front? How many see it opening from the side? From the top? Right? Bottom? Okay. So here's your reality, everybody. What, what lens, what filter did you see this thing through to see it opening from the top, the bottom, the right, left? Was that your conscious analytical brain that said, hmm, I think I'll see, choose to see this from opening from the top? Is that what happened? Was there any conscious, logical, rational process that you went through that determined what view, what perception of reality you just saw this? Or <laughs> did you see it from a different mind, a different part of your being, a different place, right? That is your filter. Because the box is nothing. It's an illusion. But your perception of right, left, top, or bottom came from your subconscious. And that's how you perceive every aspect of your life. You will always see it through the same filter. Okay? Because it's not there until you show up. Until the observer enters the scene. So let's talk a little bit about this idea of law of attraction. Who's heard of that? Yeah. What do you think about that? <laughs> how, many, how many would say they're really dialed in with this law and they just like got it nailed? <laughs> Few. How many is like, yeah, I sort of play with it, you know, work with it a little bit? Okay. How many is like, I have no clue what it is? Never, uh, right. So pretty much sort of what we're talking about. It was just a fancy name of this idea of what's running the ship. And our little ant and elephant analogy basically says that, you know, you have your conscious mind that's off in one direction. What you want to do, what you want to produce, what you want to do with your life, and, and all these goals and dreams and desires, right? And you're working hard. And you're focused. And you're diligent. And you go to the partner seminars. And you read the CDs. And you, you do everything that makes sense to do because you're coming from this part of your brain that we've been trained so hard to trust in, rely upon, it's got to make sense, reasonable, ducks in a row, everything has to fit, boom. Yeah, how's that work in really creating the life of your dreams? Right? And our little ant does it all, works hard, gets a lot of information, he's passionate, he's excited, all these things that he's working for and nothing. And then that gets to this, instead of a breakthrough, there's a breakdown. So the breakdown actually gets to the point where he hangs his head in defeat and boom, in that instant, he sees why he hasn't been able to create those things in his life. It's because he's walking on the back of an elephant who's traveling in the opposite direction. <laughs> right? That's where most people are at. If you're struggling to create, if you're struggling to create change, it's because there's a different part of you that's running the ship that you're not even aware of. A breakthrough is just, oh my gosh, I'm on the back of an elephant going the opposite direction. That's why that's not happening. Does that put you back in the controller seat? Just to see that. <laughs> Does that take a little pressure off? Well, that's why all my knowledge and skill and hard work and talent wasn't working, because it would never work. That's all surface stuff, everyone. It's good, and it's certainly better than not having that. But you know there's a lot of people out there with half the skill, the knowledge, and talent that you have that are living the dream, right? So the key becomes not whether you have the ability or the power. You do. And you know you do because it's in this package of an ape. And the key is that that package is the answer to all of life's problems. And the interference comes when there's a concept or a, an, an idea that's less than who you are. 
But it's not a bad thing. As I, as I say, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Don't put any negative energy on limiting beliefs. All those limiting beliefs, they're the cause of my... See, most people, they spend their whole life as a victim, thinking everything outside of them is the cause of their pain, their hurt, and their stress. And they spend their entire lives trying to force and manipulate and control and alter and change what they're looking at, which is the illusion, right? But then you've got this group here that's trying to that knows that's not it, right? There's an energy. They taught it to me in school. There's a power in the force that goes beyond this. It's in the unseen realm. It makes up the majority of the entire universe. That's what's causing things, right? So I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna get mad at the screen. I'm not gonna get upset with what I'm looking at because it's a movie, right? Then some people say, got it, I'm just gonna leave the theater. But see, in the back of their mind, they know that's still playing. It's still, you know, creating some stress. Because it's still there. You know how many people actually are successful with transforming their life? And I really appreciate Dr. Chestnut's talk about saying, we're done in the personal development industry of just giving theory. We're done just blowing smoke and giving you hope created a system that works, works every time for everyone because it's based on natural holistic principles. Just like your adjustment will work for everyone every time. If a patient shows up and they're alive, the power's in them, they'll respond to your adjustment, period, end of story. If we remove the interference on your identity, and that's at the root cause of everything in my system, we talk about that, then we can heal these patterns. Then we can restore back to where it should be, right? So the process becomes identifying that cause. What's the behind the scene cause, right? What is it that we're looking for as the process to move? Let's not focus <laughs> Get it, and, and you already have it, right? You, you've got the knowledge, skill, all that, all of a sudden. Let's focus on changing the direction of that elephant. Because here's the thing, they're inseparable, but they're distinguishable. This part of your brain, the two minds, conscious and subconscious, completely different operating systems, completely different agendas, completely separate and distinct. You will never <laughs> create that change by just trying to think positive and changing your thought process. You gotta change the direction of the elephant. You gotta find out first that it's there, where's it going? Secondly, why is it so important you're going that way? That's the safety thing. And no logic, no reason, no good, positive, uh, uh, motivating, inspiring force will change the direction of your elephant. Because it still thinks it's doing its best job to keep you safe from all that time, money, joy, freedom, happiness, and love because of some distorted, perverted association that was made at an energetic level back, back, all the way, let's see if this is, before you were born. Powerful book, Bruce Lipton, right? Biology of Belief, anybody familiar with that one? Yeah, he said, he said the stuff that we're talking about, these energetic patterns that have been trapped in your cells, in your DNA, go back, biblically, as back as seven generations. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad. That energy, not a belief system, an energetic pattern trapped in cells brought forward in the form of DNA. Mom, Dad, come together, right? 50% of this energetic pattern that forms and threatens identity and forms beliefs to keep you what? Safe, right? There before you even show up. Then we got the process of precognitive where your nervous system expanding. What does it do? Gets information, gets stimulus from the environment. I worked with the lady processing, going through, her, taking her through our system. She was 10 months in utero. She's like, I don't want to come out. I said, why didn't you want to come out? She says, well, it wasn't safe out there. I said, you weren't born, how do you know it wasn't safe out there? I don't know, I could just sense it wasn't safe out there. Well, after she was born, the reason she felt and sensed neurologically it wasn't safe because her father was an alcoholic beating her mother all the time. You think that was a high energetic state or low energetic state? 
Yeah, the nervous system was exposed to that energy. Belief systems were formed in that moment to say, life is not a safe place. You live a very contracted, very sheltered, very insecure life because the belief system was trying to keep her safe from all that stuff out there. And she wasn't even born yet. Then we got the cognitive stuff, and most of the, the, the traumatic stuff is where we you know, look at a memory through what you see, what you hear, experience, and those experienced that little boy, seeing the, you know, was that, uh, seeing his mom, right, getting taken out, not a pleasant experience. Some threatening energy there. Money was the scapegoat. And this thing you have to understand, my, our one seminar, Beyond Wealth Weekend, we, we guarantee breakthroughs around this stuff, and we talk about how money is a scapegoat. This is the wrong place at the wrong time. The only reason you have financial struggle, the only reason any human being could ever, ever be stressed about money or, or not have it or not be able to hold on to it or not understand their meaning is because there's been some association. It was in the wrong place at the wrong time. The nervous system said, oh, okay, this money thing that's been talked about, that's your problem. And by avoiding it, it's got this sense that you're going to avoid pain. Oh, but then we forgot about the part that says your natural state <laughs> is to be abundant and prosperous and not stress about money. So you got this part of you saying, y silly, you, you're not supposed to worry about money. That doesn't feel good. Then you have this other part of you that says, says no, 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 uh, money creates pain. <laughs> Do you see the, the battle that wages? And it's all behind the scenes, everyone. You have no clue consciously Oh, what's going on there? So we work on this process of talking to your subconscious. What's the language? So I spent 20 years learning the language of your subconscious mind so that we can talk with it. It's just like a little kid. 80%. 80% of your belief systems are formed by the time you're 8 years old. Done. Poem and a story. Because why? Nervous system's operating a theta alpha state. It's a state of hypnosis. So whatever it's exposed to gets programmed, hardwired in that moment. And it's going to stay there the rest of your life until what? Till you show up. Not change it, not reprogram it, not delete it and focus with your affirmations, visualizations to create a new belief system, but talk to your subconscious, let it know, hey, it's okay. You're safe. It's okay to have all kinds of money, all kinds of time, all kinds of freedom, all kinds of love and joy and peace. Then your conscious mind shows up then that's the role of your conscious mind. Not trying to change your reality, not trying to force your will and power on your patients or your investments or anything else in your life. That's not its job, never was and never will, if you're open to this. I submit to you that what is creating your reality behind the scenes of these energetic patterns trapped in cellular memory, whether it's your body, subconscious, whatever, that's the source. And just like freeing up interference, in your patient's bodies, they heal. The body has this powerful sense of knowing that this isn't right. I want. It. That's why you feel bad, because <laughs> it knows you're not supposed to struggle in relationships. It knows you're not supposed to ever have these low energetic states. And if you do, when you're balanced and whole, it's because of injustice that's going on out there, right? You can be angry and upset that there's starving kids out there. You can be angry and upset that there's sexual abuse. You can be angry and upset that there's slave trade. Those are negative states. They're lower energy states. But it's all about them. It's all about the injustice that's going on outside. When you feel angry and upset and depressed about you, that's all selfish. That's all the belief systems trying to say, uh, it's all about me right now. It's not about my patients. <laughs> it's not about really helping people. Because I'm afraid they're going to reject me. I'm afraid they're not going to like me. I'm afraid that that marketing plan is going to work. Right? It's all good. Just notice it from now on. And notice that those states and those feelings and emotions really are there as your gift. Greatest gift are emotions. How many emotions do you think the human being can experience? Research says about 3,500. 3,500 different emotional states. What's emotion? Simply energy, right? It's, it's words and labels that we give to these energetic qualities. A whole bandwidth of high and low, we tag it with a name. They said about 3,500. Guess how many the average person experiences in a 30-day period? 
And this is like a rock star. This is a person that really is in touch with their emotional state. 60, about two a day. Because our culture, society has been, we, we shun these things. We suppress them because we don't know. We don't want to be overwhelmed by these things, so we got to shut them down. We got to drag them up. We got to run away. We got to cope. We got to get counseling. Treat it. It's, it's the disease. Yeah, you treat your emotions like that. That's just like drugging your patients because you're not listening to the real meaning of what is trying. Hey, I need some help. <laughs> right? If, that, if uh, you get that bad report from the doctor and fear strikes you, that is a sense that, hey, you're not in alignment with the power that made the body, heals the body. You got some type of belief that says this cancer is bigger than you, right? You get stressed about finances and the economy and the insurance companies that if for some reason that has more power than you. That is a lie. There is nothing more powerful than the gifts that the creator put in you. This innate intelligence. And it's a beautiful package. It can heal stuff, repair stuff, renew stuff, restore your life. Oh, it's loaded with gifts and talents and abilities, unique things. This is the other really exciting thing that our people see when they go through our process is that once we expose that interference, it's a two-way street, everyone. See, see, the lie keeps these negative energy patterns going on and on and on forever, right? But as soon as we flip it over and expose the truth, man, there's a shift in energy. There's a shift in energy that once you go up, you can't go back, Right? And so it begins this stair step. And everything on this wavelength, this is like tuning your dial, you know? This wavelength, you were stuck in a resonance pattern that could only hear country music. <laughs> and some of you may like country music, so that's all good. But what if you don't? What if you really want jazz? You love jazz, you want jazz so bad, but your resonant energy is stuck on country. It makes no difference how bad you want it, how hard you work for it. You're never going to get jazz because you're stuck in a country. So the breakthrough shifts that energy. Oh, beautiful, right? And once you learn the process, guess what? You can always elevate, elevate. Up here's God, right? Get closer to the master. Get closer to the maker. Get closer to your true self, your highest expression of yourself, your full potential, right? It's a process. So let's, the uh, remaining minutes, let's just go through some uh, techniques here. So again, talking about the beliefs. I'm going to give you a technique real quick. This is cool, and this is, a, this, is a, this is a process just to check, is your switch on or off? Okay, you want to try it? Everybody stand up for me. It's called the sway test, and it's very simple. It just sort of checks if you are resonating or if you're in alignment and congruent with the thought. What do we say? Elephants going this way. Ants going this way. You will, this is stressful. <laughs> you will never experience, you will never get anything in life that you want because this thing is so powerful, it's doing what? It's keeping you safe, all right? But you want to create change. You want to do something in your life that says, this is going to serve me better. I want it here, right? It sounds good. It looks good. I want to do this thing. Let me see if that's congruent with my elephant. Let's just see if there's resonance to do this thing. Because if not, don't, don't waste your time. You can read all the books. You can go to all the seminars. You can do it. You can set all the goal formulas. But if your elephant has an agenda to keep you safe with a different reality, you will never experience it. Oh, it might show up temporarily, but then the self-sabotage kicks in, right? So this is real simple. So ladies, if you have uh, uh, um, heels on, you may want to take it off. You can take your shoes off, be comfortable, that's fine. It's called the sway test. It's really simple. And it's an energy thing, so you got to be open, be what? All right, so very simply, um, what I want you to do, just close your eyes, and I want you to just state your name. My name is Matt. State your name, and sense what direction you sway. How many people swayed a little forward? Great. So now I want you to state Let's do it. For those people who didn't sense it, then what I want you to just, in your mind, say yes three times. Yes, yes, yes. Now which way did you sway? Forward? Okay. Now I want you to state a false name. My, uh, pick a name, state it, Go. 
Which way did you sway? Backwards? You sense that? Now, just again, no, no, no. Just feel that. Okay? Pretty cool? All right, take a seat. So here's a little technique that you can check Monday <laughs> to say, are we congruent? Are we in alignment with this new goal, this dream, this thing that we're, we're all the stuff that you've learned over the weekend, all the stuff that you want to do with your practice. It sounds good, right? <laughs> it makes sense. Seems reasonable to buy that or do this or follow this, right? See if it's congruent with the elephant. Check behind the scenes. This isn't just a simple energetic test. It's an off or on switch. The, the, we said earlier, this, this, this law of the universe is very simple. When you flip the switch on for abundance, prosperity, joy, happiness, love, guess what shows up? Yeah, if it's not showing up because your switch is off, and it's off because at some level of your unconscious mind, it's trying to keep you what? It doesn't think it's good for you. We know that doesn't make any sense to the logical mind. We understand that it, the anical brain just really has trouble with the agenda of the subconscious. But be good to yourself and just realize, hey, I got stuff from seven generations back in here. I don't know what the heck they did or what energy they were exposed to, but it's part of my cells, it's part of my DNA. But you know what? The really cool thing of this work, quantum physics says, once we change this energy pattern, it's changed for how long? Forever, yeah. Once you change, create this shift in energy, it's done. It's called wave cancellation theory. Very simply, it looks like this. We're going to say, here's you, right? Here's you on conditioning. Here's your brain. Here's your brain on drugs. Remember that egg show, egg commercial, right? So that's the distorted, perverted you. This one is the one that's responsible for all the pain, hurt, stress, and heartache. Not your patients, not your spouse, not your kids, not anything that's happening in the scene, because that's an illusion. It's an expression of your energetic state, your energetic quality, from seen to unseen, invisible to visible, intangible to tangible. So what we do in our work, we take wave, wave cancellation theory, just like, just like noise cancellation headphones, okay? We take the negative energy and we use it against itself, right? We send the equal and opposite 180 pattern back through the net result, right? Is that cancellation, that aberrant frequency goes, and guess what's left? Your true self, your higher self, your perfect self. At, 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 at the very least, it creates an environment for you to create. At the very least, it gets rid of the, net, the noise, the chatter the negative feelings. And the evidence that you have is you show up in your practice and you don't have any anxiety or worry that the patients are gonna show up. You look at your finances and your checkbook and your investments and you don't care, right? You have a knowing, that breakthrough that says, man, I'm okay. <laughs> the natural, it doesn't look, but see, I'm changing my environment before it shows up. I'm changing my energetic pattern frequency before it shows up, right? That's, that's the, the notice. That's the reality. So over this rest of the weekend, use that test. Talk about it. Show it up, you know, at the office. What are we resonating with as a team? What do we resonate? What, what, is our, what does our elephant perceive that it's safe for us to move forward in? At least you've got an environment that's not cluttered. At least you, you're not swimming upstream. And that's where personal transformation starts, everyone, is clearing the slate, clearing the past, allowing those, those negative energy patterns to be healed, completed, and, and restored, allowing your true self to be expressed, allowing this higher expansion. They did a, stay, they did a study, and I'll be closing up here. A study, NASA did a study. They, they, took, they took a DNA from a person, cut it out, and put it in like three miles down the road. And they said, okay, I want you to think really bad stuff. Think of the worst pain and hurt and stress you've ever been under. Okay, and the person thought, and they measured the DNA that was three miles away, and they watched it, that little alpha helix deal, right? It went, just contracted. Vibrationally, it woo, dropped. The bandwidth went down. Uh, fear, worry, depression, anger, all those things we're talking about. That's, that's the labels we put to that state. 
and he said, uh, okay, now we want you to think something really positive, exciting. Just this is the time where you felt loved and appreciated, valued and respected. We're gonna go, boom, check the DNA three miles away. Expanded, bigger than it was before, okay? And they measured frequency and it was just like, oh yeah, has a higher output right now, okay? When that happens at a, at a cellular level, everyone, that's when your reality changes and you don't have to work for it. Just like your patients don't have to do a thing when you adjust them. It's a natural, holistic process of renewal, regeneration, and healing. That's what your life needs. It needs you. It needs this innate intelligence to show up fully expressing itself, not interfered with, not contracted, not trying to keep you safe from everything. Allow it to express. And so I'm done. So if you have questions, <laughs> you want to talk with me, get more information, I'll be at the booth. We have a powerful system. It's called Quantum Emergence. Works every time for everyone. If it resonates, we're here to serve. Did you learn a little bit? Thank you. Have an awesome weekend.